A Vault of Treasure or Dungeon of Fools. Fade In, Interior Dark Tunnel. Two adventurers forge through a subterranean tunnel, their suits of chainmail clinking in the absolute silence. Adventurer number one has sharp blue eyes that sweep across the darkness ahead. He carries a large shoulder pack and kerosene lantern. This is Corbin, a twilighter by profession. He lights up dark dungeons for people like adventurer number two, the employer. They both have sweat rings on their tunics and six-day stubble on their jaws. The employer stops. There. He points to a narrow side tunnel. I'll have to extinguish my lamp. I didn't hire you to lead me around in the dark. Nor did you hire me to blaze a trail along a goblin footpath. Corbin dons a pair of archaic goggles. He passes another pair to the employer. Then he extinguishes his lamp. The tunnel becomes pitch black. I'm blind! Corbin leads the employer into the narrow tunnel. Lower your voice. Goblins have poor hearing. That would be false. I can handle a goblin, don't you worry. He moves his hand to the hilt of his sword. Goblins are pack creatures. Where you find one, you find many. I can handle many. As long as I can see them. And what should these eyepieces be doing, other than making me look foolish? These eyepieces can sense heat from a creature's body. They're fashioned from tissue off an owl's eyeball. The employer rips off his goggles. Owl's eyeball? They round a corner. Corbin stops, hugging the wall. Corbin's point of view, in shimmering silver outline, is a goblin. Small and spiny, it has snake-like eyes that sparkle against the black walls. I'm being led by a dolt! Or a con artist! The goblin perks up. Suddenly, a dozen more goblins perk up. We're drawing back. Slow and measured. Corbin backs away slowly. The goblins follow along slowly. The employer slips back into his goggles. He sees the goblins and dashes back up the tunnel. Corbin dashes after him, so do the goblins. They reach the main tunnel. Corbin lights his lamp as they hurry along. The goblins catch up easily, gigging and sniveling as they race alongside. One reaches out and tickles the employer. Ah, oh, they're playful. They just want to play. Goblins play with their food. The tickling goblin bears rows of ragged fangs. The employer shrieks and pulls away. An underground stream runs across the tunnel. Ah! Go goblins for water! Goblins for water! Corbin and the employer charge into the stream. The goblins charge in with them, splashing and frolicking. One dives down and paddles along underwater. The employer climbs up the opposite bank as a goblin jumps on his back, attaching itself to his pack. The employer swats at it with his sword. It wants your rations! Get it off! Get it, get it off me! Corbin unfastens the pack and tosses it back into the stream. The goblins swarm it, devouring tins of hard tack. Corbin and the employer dash further up the tunnel. Why couldn't you have thrown your pack? You were carrying the food. All of the food. The goblins finish the hard tack and spring further up the tunnel in pursuit of Corbin and the employer. I recommend a quick exit. Not until I find what I came for. The goblins gain quickly from behind. The tunnel begins descending. Corbin tosses his lantern into the darkness ahead. It rolls away, gaining speed as it goes. Why? Corbin yanks him into a side tunnel. The goblins bound past them after the lantern, disappearing from sight. I trust you have other light? I'm a professional. He pulls a torch from his belt and lights it. Dozens of intricate etchings mark the walls. These are runes to ward off the undead. We must be near the crypt. He hurries down the side tunnel. Corbin rushes to keep up. And what pray tell is buried in this crypt? A troll queen. Trolls don't have queens. That's why this one is very special. They reach a dead end. Now the runes just stop. How can that be? Trolls may have meager brains, but they do enjoy their games. Corbin shoves at the walls. The employer joins him. A boulder suddenly breaks free, rolling back along a narrow passage. They push it along. Interior Troll Queen's Crypt Continuous The boulder rolls into a large chamber. A massive stone coffin dominates the room. Corbin and the employer inch toward it. Do trolls enjoy setting traps? Mm, I'm numb. They reach the coffin and slowly remove the heavy lid. Inside is a large skeleton. Gold and silver charms adorn the bones. Shining mana! He snatches the precious metals by the fistful. Corbin begins plucking some leftovers. What are you doing, Twilighter? Collecting my cut. The employer draws his sword and rests it against Corbin's throat. I've rethought your cut. Twenty percent. Not negotiable. If it were a steel blade against my throat, I'd renegotiate. Twenty percent. How about I bleed you slowly and leave you here with the queen? What 
might Edgemere think? Edgemere? The village where you hired me? It's a mercenary community. What would they think if you came out with 100% of the treasure, yet I didn't come out at all? The employer grits his teeth. Mercenaries are quite stringent with double-crossers. Exterior countryside evening. Storm clouds are brewing on the horizon. Corbin hikes across fields of long grasses. He's alone. A gold amulet hangs from his neck. Wilted haystalks dot the fields. A cold drizzle begins falling. Exterior Edgemere, night. Ramshackle buildings on a wind and rain-swept prairie. It looks like a town from Old West, but with none of the charm and twice the dirt. Vagrants and sneak thieves lurk in the shadows. The downpour has turned the street into muddy furrows. Corbin sloshes into town. Interior, the broken boot inn, night. A tavern with a staircase. Several grizzled patrons stew over their mugs of grog. Corbin enters and shakes off the wet. He eyes the fat innkeeper behind the bar. 